Well, hello, this is Kelly, and I am the Mathematic Plumber, and welcome to video one of the wet venting series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of wet venting. All code references will be made from the 2015 National Plumbing Code of Canada. In order to understand this video, you're going to need to have some prior plumbing code experience, including interpreting code and sizing and naming drainage waste and venting. And if you don't have any prior experience with the plumbing code, I do have two video series that'll help you out. The first one is called Basic Drainage Waste and Venting, and the second one is called Level 2 Drainage Waste and Venting. In the plumbing trade, we have many different types of drains and many different types of vents. But then we have one type of pipe that lands right in between the two. It's called the wet vent because it is a drain and a vent all built into one pipe. The code defines it this way. Wet vent means a solar waste pipe that also serves as a vent pipe and extends from the most downstream wet vented fixture connection to the most upstream fixture connection. Now that is a very wordy definition, so let's break it down showing you a couple pictures here. So the first example here is a wet vented bathroom group where I'm going to install a toilet here, a lav sink here, and a shower down over here. Now you'll notice that if you're looking that there is no vent connected to the water closet trap arm. There is no vent connected to the shower trap arm. At least that's what we see. We only see drains there. Yet if we look at that lav, we see this vent coming off the top of it. Well, the water closet and shower are vented through the wet vent. The wet vent starts here at the lav, comes down, goes around the corner, and then comes along until it meets up with the water closet trap arm. The key there is that pipe is big enough to act as a drain and a vent. Therefore, it's a wet vent. Now, we won't be sizing any wet vents in this video, but what I'd like to do is show you the inside of a pipe that's being used or something is draining through it in an adequately sized wet vent. You'll notice the water level should never come above the halfway point in the pipe, leaving the top half of the pipe available for actual venting. Now, in this next diagram, we have a slightly different arrangement. You'll notice we got a lav sink, a bathtub, and a water closet, but they're tied into a soiler waste stack. Now the lav sink has its own vent there, but the bathtub and water closet will need to be wet vented through the soiler waste stack. So we call that a wet vented portion of a soiler waste stack, right from this point here, right down to the water closet trap arm connection. When our wet vent is going down a vertical pipe, there's a slightly different dynamic happening. The water itself swirls down and clings to the inside wall of the pipe leaving an air core right in the middle. So the pipe will only be about half full, but the center of that pipe will be the venting portion. Not all wet vent arrangements involve a water closet. In this scenario here, I have a trap arm going to a shower and a trap arm going over to a soaker tub. And this little section of pipe between the trap arms is a wet vent. Now, while we're looking at this picture, I wanna go through a really important code clause, 2562 number two. Except for wet vents, where a vent pipe is connected to a nominally horizontal soiler waste pipe, the connection shall be above the horizontal center line of the soiler waste pipe. So there's two scenarios we can draw out of that code clause, and this arrangement here shows both. So this clause is talking about joining a vent into a horizontal piping arrangement, and how it needs to come out above the horizontal center line, while this continuous vent right here comes out above the horizontal center line. But I've got another picture here to help us illustrate that. So in this picture here, I have some horizontal piping with a TY in the middle of it, and the branch of the TY is coming straight out of the top of the pipe. This would be considered above the horizontal center line totally and completely. But we can actually roll this T down like this picture here. The question becomes, well, how far can I roll this down? In order to answer that, we need to draw an imaginary line through the middle of the run of that TY and the branch that's coming off the side for the vent needs to be above that horizontal center line. So what this will ensure is that vent pipe will be in direct communication with the airspace that's in the top half of that drain pipe. And then we look at this diagram here where I have a Y that's connected into the horizontal piping when it's clearly below the horizontal center line of the pipe. Now we can't do this with regular vents, but we can certainly drain through a wet vent like this. And back to this picture right here, we see the continuous vent coming well above the horizontal center line. Continuous vent is a regular vent. And down over here, we see the wet vent. And it is below the horizontal center line. So this is totally done to code. 
And that brings us to the end of this video, but stay tuned for the next video where we get into the wet vent code clauses. The topic of the day will be piping arrangements and what it looks like. Until that time, you have yourself a fantastic day.